Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and I've already shown you how to make these circularly polarized cloverleaf antennas for your 5.8 gigahertz FPV equipment and uh, I've linked to that video in the description of this one. But when you make these they work really well but if you're going to use them on a mini quad then odds are that all the upside down landings, the crashes, they're going to get pretty beaten up and eventually if you keep straightening them up they'll fracture and break and oh, it's just a pain if you're your day's flying is ruined because you've damaged your antenna. So I figured maybe we need some kind of protection on a mini quad for these antennas. And I looked at the other antennas on the market and if you go for something like this Immersion RC you'll see it's got a lovely plastic dome on there that really protects the antenna from severe impacts and you know even just getting caught on a fence or something. So I thought hmm I'm pretty sure I can do something like that but how? And here's what I came up with. Ping pong balls! Look you can buy them they're really cheap. See white ones, orange ones and you can use a ping pong ball to protect your cloverleaf antenna. Now what you do is you take a ball and you cut it in half as best you can and once you've cut it in half you've got two little domes that you can use to protect your circularly polarized antenna. The size of the antenna is such that it fits nicely inside there and the plastic material used for these ping pong balls is not going to affect the tuning of your 5.8 gigahertz antenna. It's, it's uh, Radio wave wise it's completely inert so it's not going to change anything so all you've got to do is find a way to mount your antenna inside that semicircle of ping pong ball and I'll show you how I did that. First you grab a sheet of core flute or coroplast or whatever you want to call it depending on your country and you just put your little ping pong ball on there and trace around it so then you've got a base, a base on which you can mount this little bubble and through which your cloverleaf antenna will poke. Now with a pair of scissors cut your core flute circle out and it should be a great fit for the ping pong ball. You might have to trim it up a little bit I'm doing it pretty quick and roughly here and there we go. Now we have our little dome with a base on it. So the next step is to make a hole in the middle here so that we can fit our antenna through that plastic base. The hole should be a very snug fit on the coaxial cable especially where the wires go so that when you push it down there you go you can see that the horizontal wires we'll have to give them a bit of a bend are level with the plate that the round disc we've cut and what we're going to do now is just put a dab of hot glue on each of these little wires to make sure that it, the uh, plate is stuck to the antenna. Once you've got those blobs of hot glue on that's what it should look like just enough to hold the antenna just on the corners there that'll be just fine so that's what she looks like and of course at this stage we could just plop our little uh, ping pong ball on the top and it would look like that but yeah that doesn't look very nice it's been extra, extra drag here with this high dome it doesn't uh, doesn't really look that good I'd rather have mine looking like this so how are we going to turn that dome into something like that well that's a little secret I discovered the other day while playing around trying out different things look at this what I have here is my hot air reflow gun. I've shown you this in a previous video. It's a thing designed for re-soldering circuit boards and really it's just a little hot air gun on the end here. This hot air comes rushing out at whatever pace. I'm just going to wind it up a bit. just want a bit more speed out of it because you can vary the temperature and the flow of the gas. So wound it up a bit and I'll show you what I discovered. If you hold your ping pong ball on a metallic, cold metallic surface like this, it could just be a sheet of steel or iron or something. I've got this nice ingot of aluminum and then you just apply heat to the inside of that dome with your little heat gun and press down with your hands on the on the ping pong ball around there. Try and keep it fairly spread out, keep the so it doesn't make a sort of unwanted oval and just keep the heat on spring that gun around like this, just move it around. You'll see, already see what's happening can't you? With the pressure and the heat and the cool we're getting a dimple in the top and it's starting to look like that expensive commercial antenna. This is going to provide our protection whilst also reducing the drag. Now you can see it's coming along quite nicely. It's not quite as uh, smooth, it's a bit dimpled in the corners but ah, you know I'm doing this very quickly. If you want to take your time, I did one before, of course the first one's always best and it actually came out looking really nice. But this one's coming out okay, it's going to be functional. Ah, Murphy's Law, I overheated this one, it's got a bit of a kink in it now but hey, you get two halves to a ping pong ball so I'll have another go. Right, so there we go, I stuffed this one up a bit as well. <laughs> I'm in a hurry to make this because I'm going flying. But there you go, you can see I've reduced the profile somewhat by dimpling the end there and if I had time I'd take it a bit further but ah there you go. And it provides a nice cover, doesn't actually touch the antenna, nice cover for the antenna so that when I land upside down with this one with my mini quad it's not going to get all broken. So my next step is to glue the ping pong half, ball, half of the ping pong ball onto that red plastic plate. 
I'll use hot glue for that. Next step is to whack a bit of heat shrink up over here, just to make it look pretty. And then of course the same hot air gun that I used to make the dimple in the top of the ping pong ball, I just heat up the heat shrink so it all shrinks down rather nicely, all doing this from the really odd angle so it may come out looking rather awkward. But there we go. Give it the professional touch. Voila. So all it takes now, I just put my SMA or reverse focus camera, come on, pay attention please. All I have to do now is put my SMA or reverse SMA connector on that end and I've got my protected cloverleaf antenna for my mini quad. Okay, here we are with the lottery scales from hell again. Look at them, two grams, three grams, two grams, three, two, it's zero. I didn't even push the button and it went to zero. I'm sure this must help. That's calibrated it now, so it's working perfectly. Oh. Come on. Oh. There we go. This is an old tried and true engineering trick there to try and make them work, but it's not seems to be working at the moment. Um, anyway, we'll just try roughly. That. Oh God, it's, it's around about two. It says 12 grams, 13 grams, 14 grams, and 13 grams. It goes back to oh man, piece of crap, Chinese sh shit. I mean, this time I am. This is a really bad set of scales. I'm sorry, but I bought these. They have never worked properly. But oh, it's oh, try it. 10 grams, 11 grams, 10 grams. That's probably close close enough. Close enough for our purposes. And here's the other one. Come on. Damn you, 11 grams, 12 grams, 11 grams. So, yeah, they weigh about the same. Oh, look at this, it's terrible. These scales are utter rubbish. This is 13 now, 14, 13. Oh. oh, where's my hammer? Where's my hammer? Maybe if I actually put a preload on here and then hit the tear button, it'll make a difference. Maybe it's just around, nah, look, these scales are crap. I think I'm gonna do a tear down of these scales with a hammer and a large, another large blunt instrument, but hey, they seem to be stable. Oh. Try it again. Here we go. 11 grams, 12 grams for the immersion, 10 grams. Oh. And here's our one. 10 grams. So it's probably about a gram, and nine grams. It's a little bit lighter than the commercial one. How about that? So there we go. Save yourself some money and make yourself a protected cloverleaf antenna or by yourself. Now, if you've got questions, comments, all the usual things, put them on the bottom of this video. I'll do my best to answer the questions and read all the comments. In the meantime, if you've got any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, let me know. Look, now it's working perfectly. I'll give it another try. Here we go. Now that it's decided to play ball, nine grams for our antenna and 12 grams for the commercial. So it's actually two or three grams lighter. Woohoo! Yay! Those scales are going to die. I'd like some suggestions as to how I should kill these scales because they're damn useless. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you again soon. And I'll catch you when I get back to the bench.